Hey everyone, Steve here once again to finally show a video on how I installed Mac OS Sierra on my Hackintosh. I haven't had a lot of time and resources to work on this, but after tinkering around, I finally have a stable build that works. I apologize that this isn't the latest update of Sierra, which at the time of recording is version 10.12.2, but in theory most of the software patches should work with newer versions of Sierra, with the exception of the NVIDIA drivers that will need the respectable driver for the correct OS version. Before I get started, I just want to plug ToyMacX86.com where I found most of the resources I needed, as well as the community post to fill in the gaps. The articles I used and links to the software pages will be in the description for others to use. Starting with the software I needed, I grabbed the OS from the Mac App Store. I went to ToyMacX86.com to grab software and kecks such as EFI Mounter for the EFI partition and Neobeast for drive creation, and fake SMC and two Ethernet kecks. Outside of ToyMac, I grabbed the latest version of Clover Bootloader from SourceForge, the Clover Configurator from AltaVista.org, the SSDT Power Configuration Shell Scripts from Piker Alpha on GitHub, the Audio Codec by Toledo on GitHub, and the Video Card Web Driver from the video themselves. I got to work by making the bootable media with a spare USB drive that had at least 8GB of space. I formatted the USB with disk utility and made sure it used a GUI partition table and a format of Mac OS Extended Journal. With the USB format, I ran Neobeast to install Sierra on the USB drive. The only special thing when going through the prompts was checking that the install would have a UEFI boot mode. After letting it do its thing for 20 minutes, I had a bootable drive ready to go. Before doing anything else, I shut down my PC and also removed my GTX 960 from the PC so there would be no complications later. I inserted the Unibeast drive into my PC, started it up, and pressed F12 on my keyboard to bring up the boot options to select my USB. I was presented with the Clover boot screen and selected the boot off the USB. After about a minute or so, the Mac OS installer would show up and I went through the prompts. At the drive selection page, I went to Disk Utility and formatted the drive that would run my OS. I called it Sierra and made sure that it had a GUI partition table and Mac OS Extended Journal selected. After it formatted, I went back to the drive selection page, selected Sierra, and let the OS install. This took around 15 minutes and eventually wanted to restart. From restarting, I booted off my USB again and at the Clover screen, I selected Boot from Sierra. After waiting a few minutes, I got to the Apple welcome screen and just went through the prompts like any other Mac. After going through them, I was greeted with the desktop and ready to start patching. First piece of software I used was Clover Installer. This program, as well as others, will not be able to run the first time. It will have to be executed in the security and privacy section of the settings application. Going through all that, I proceeded through the first two pages, but before installing, I selected the Customize button to add in extra options. I'll leave a screenshot of what options I selected. Selecting what I needed, I clicked Install, and let the installer do its thing, and eventually I had the bootloader and a new EFI partition on my PC. Before continuing, I went to a new EFI partition on my drive using the Finder to make a copy of my current config.plist file, just in case of problems later. While I was within the EFI partition, I deleted number folders in this pathway. With the only folder there called Other, I placed unzipped copies of both the fake SMC kecks and the two Ethernet kecks within the Other folder of the EFI partition. The next piece of software I used was Clover Configurator to set the system preferences of this machine. After unzipping the app, I placed it within the Applications folder of the Finder. Like the Clover Installer, this file will have to be opened within the Security and Privacy section of the Settings app. Once it launched, I opened the config.plist file from the EFI drive in the Finder window. From here, I went to the Boot tab in the left pane, and in the section for default boot volume, I typed in the name of my boot drive, Sierra. Next, I went to the SM BIOS tab to create the system definition. Normally, I would have made this a Mac Pro 3.1 like my other videos, but as of Sierra, that model isn't supported. The Tony Mac community suggests to use an iMac 14.2 definition to have a stable experience. To do this, I clicked on the magic wand button, selected the iMac photo, selected the correct iMac from the drop-down list, 
and made some random values for the serial number. I then copied the serial number field and went to the RT variables tab. Here, I replaced the text in the MLB field with a copied serial number and then added five random digits to make the value 17 characters, which is a requirement. Making this the last change for now, I saved the plist file, exit clover config, and restart it. I also removed my unibeast drive as well because I can now boot off my SSD with the clover boot manager. Let me note that this error screen appears after I select my drive in Clover and will reoccur during every reboot. I'll address it at the end of the video, but it doesn't stop me, nor would it stop anyone trying to replicate this process for a working Hackintosh. This next boot up took a few minutes, which isn't normal, but it did get to the desktop eventually. I got shut down errors, but I ignored them. When I got to my desktop, the screen ratio was shrunk and the graphics were off, so that made me work on the graphics card next. The first program I ran was EFI Mounter V3 to get the EFI partition to appear. Next, I selected the NVIDIA web driver package, ran that, and went through the prompts and the agreements. Within a few minutes, the installer was finished and was prompting to restart. Before allowing that, I minimized that window went to my EFI drive in a finder window, and went to the location where my config.plist file was located. Instead of opening it with Clover config, I opened it with text edit. With the file open, I did a keyword search for system, and looked for something that said system parameters. Under this argument, where a string value says detect, I typed in yes in all caps. I then made a space under inject system ID value and typed in a new key called the video web and added a closing true tag. Although I don't think it was needed, but it didn't hurt anything going forward. I saved the plist file and closed that and proceeded to restart, but I shut down the PC to reinsert my graphics card. But after restarting, the weird screen ratio went away and had full HD resolution. The next part I worked on was the SSDT for power management. I started by running EFI Mounter again and keeping a finder window ready to use. Next, I opened a terminal window and entered this command to download a shell script. The next command was to change the permission of said shell script to executable. The third one was to run the shell script which had a prompt to open a file which I said no to. I then entered a command to open the newly generated SSDT files in a finder window. The two files, ssdt.aml and ssdt.dsl, will be copied into the EFI drive in a certain path listed below. With those copied, I restarted to have the patch power management setting take effect. From here, I had to do research to fix the rest of the problems, so I apologize that these weren't included earlier in my initial Clover Configurator setup. The first thing I looked into was audio. To get that going, I ran the EFI mounter again to get the EFI partition going. Next, I opened Clover Configurator with my config.plist file, went to the Devices tab, went to the audio area of the window, and changed the value of the drop-down box to number 1. I then saved and exited Clover config. I followed this up by running the audio ALC script I downloaded earlier in a terminal window. For the prompts, I said yes to confirm ALC 892, yes to audio ID injection, and yes to using audio ID 1. The rest took less than a minute, and the terminal confirmed the process was completed. I closed the terminal window, restarted, and tested the audio on my next startup. The audio was a success. The other thing I looked into fixing was the trim support for my SSD because my Hackintosh was failing to wake from sleep and randomly crashing after staying idle on my desktop for more than 20 minutes. You can see when I go to the system report and go into an overview of my SSD, it has no trim support on. To fix this, I ran EFI Mounter again, ran Color Configurator, and opened up my config.plist file. 
and selected the Kernel and Kex Patches tab. For this part, I have to thank the Tony Mac Community Forums again because it was a hassle to figure all this out. On the top Kernels to Patch table, I added a new value with the plus icon and copied these values into each cell of the table. With those values copied, I saved the plist file and restarted. I went back to the system report section again to confirm the trim support was on, and it was. From there, I didn't have any sleep issues or random crashing again. That was the last patch I made to get Sierra running smoothly on this machine. Thanks to the last few patches, the PC can be used for workloads without worrying about random crashes, flaky audio, distorted screen resolutions, and over 2 minute startup times. The OS experience is also pretty good. I have access to most features except for iMessage, which is a common problem in the Hackintosh community, and anything using Bluetooth functionality because the onboard adapter can't be recognized, but I don't use it in general. As for any ongoing issues that I haven't been able to solve, the biggest one is the startup error screen after selecting my Sierra SSD and the Clover Boot Manager. I've gone through a lot of the solutions on most forum boards, but I can't seem to solve this one. It doesn't harm anything after getting to the desktop, but if a speedy experience is one after starting up the PC, it isn't happening with this issue. Overall, this installation was probably the hardest one for me to perform, due to having to research patches that were not guaranteed to work, and a lot of trial and error when solutions were open-ended. But it did make for a good learning experience, and for anyone that didn't install the OS before that needs a guide, here's one that works. With that said, this will most likely be the last Apple OS for this PC due to the frustration that went on and the length of time it took to produce this video. However, I am looking into making a new Hagintosh with the most recent generation of Intel processors in High Sierra. But anyway, that'll do it for me. This is Steve signing off, and I'll see you around.